Hi, I'm Max Brantley with the Arkansas Times on Monday, May the 9th. News today, when District Court Judge Joseph Beckman, he, he represents a court that's sort of a municipal county judge in Cross County, resigned from office today and said he would never seek public office again. He came as evidence piled up for a coming Judicial Discipline Commission hearing on broad allegations of, of misconduct by the judge, particularly trading leniency for young male defendants in return for sexually improper photographs and, and other compromising kinds of activity. It was apparently not a very well kept secret this was going on. The, the investigation of potential criminal charges on both the state and federal level continues, but the Judicial Ethics Commission come to a probe with the way it needed to come to, to an end, which is with his removal from the bench. The Arkansas legislature met today in Little Rock only to close out the fiscal session. They got paid for doing not much of anything. They did uh, f finish up officially what had been expected all along. For the first time in many, many years, both the leadership of the House and the Senate will continue to be the same person when the regular legislative session meets next year. That's Jeremy Gillum in the House and Jonathan Dismang in the Senate. Not to worry about the legislature. They'll be back drawing per diem in less than two weeks. They're going to have a special session and talk about highway funding. At last, some senators are talking about the obvious, the need for a fuel tax increase or some other form of new tax increase. For example, applying some of the sales tax to gasoline and, and diesel sales as a means of raising money for highways, having users pay for the, for the road construction they need. But there's still some people in the legislature, and I think this includes the governor too, that follow voodoo economics. They think you can get something for nothing. They say, why well, sure, we'll raise taxes for highway if you'll cut taxes somewhere else and cut services somewhere else. Just doesn't work that way very neatly. More fuss on the charter school situation in Little Rock. We learned over the weekend that a charter school that has failed repeatedly to uh, achieve proficiency to match Little Rock School District in any significant sort of way is planning to have an expansion of its school in Little Rock, move into a nicer part of town to better serve poor, poor students, of course. And, uh, and we find out that this uh, rule has been waived, that uh, they shouldn't have been heard by the State Board of Education until next year, but Johnny Key has decreed they should be heard early. Uh, and they're going to get it. They're going to get a quick hearing before the state board of education. Most everybody expects for it to be approved because I discovered over the weekend that the Walton Family Foundation is the financial mover behind this. They own the building that this school will move into. In fact, they bought the building last year, and construction work to accommodate this building for school began in March, before they even applied for a waiver of the rule to get the expansion approved. What's more, they applied for the waiver from Johnny Key the day after. Johnny Key had finished up the action of firing Baker Curris as Little Rock School Superintendent because he opposed charter school expansions and, and hiring Mike Poor. It's a mess, it stinks, the fix is in, and there's really not much can be done about it except raise a little bit of cane, so that's what we're doing here. Uh, elsewhere around town, another education story, John Barnes, who served on the Board of Trustees of Pulaski Technical College for 20 years and was its chairman for thir 13 years has written an interesting article raising some questions about the decision this week by the Pulaski Tech Board, of which he's no longer a member, to merge with the University of Arkansas system. John Barnes makes some pretty good points that community colleges have lost the way for which they were originally entitled uh, to create some job skills and some fields that conventional four-year colleges don't traditionally do. He also notes that open enrollment is no longer possible because of legislative funding tied to achievement rates. That's not really what technical colleges were about before. They trained diesel mechanics, avionics specialists, and that sort of thing. But now if you've got to get associate degrees, it's had the effect of depressing enrollment. Also, the rising economy has, has had people staying away from going back to school, so there's that as well. I didn't get to say before uh, it happened last week, but the uh, Eugene Ellison family has won more than a million dollars in settlements with Little Rock and the owner of an apartment project over the shooting of Eugene Ellison, a 67-year-old man in his apartment on Asher Avenue. It's the biggest uh, award in, in a police misuse of force case that anybody can recall. Perhaps it'll, it'll have the, the police thinking more and better ways about how to subdue people. In this case, a man was shot inside his apartment by one of four officers standing outside the apartment. He was a 67-year-old man with a cane. They were four officers with guns. The man with the cane lost and lost pretty badly. Uh, other things to watch for today, the Panama Papers are going to be released in a searchable form today. I'm looking for community sourcing to see if there are any Arkansas people on the list that have been uh, creating offshore corporations to avoid taxation in the United States. North Carolina, emulating George Wallace, it's going to go to court to stop the federal government 
from preventing it from discriminating against LGBT people. This is over the bathroom law and other laws like Arkansas has that allow legal discrimination against gay people. The federal government is, has threatened to take away federal money from North Carolina. North Carolina wants to make a federal case out of it. The outcome could be very important for equality for many years to come. And finally, for local people who are in Little Rock and watch these kinds of things, here's a little zoning measure to, to look out for that I'm working on. There's a proposal to build a restaurant where two single-family houses now sit at the very busy uh, intersection of Cantrell Road and University Avenue. The neighborhood's already chattering about it. You can look for this to grow into a little bit of neighborhood controversy before it's over with. I'm Max Brantley. I'll be back tomorrow. You feel it in your heart, the spirit of Little Rock. We've had that spirit since 1927, helping build our city by producing decades of leaders in the heart of our state. We are the heart of business and innovation, the heart of politics and government, the heart of arts and culture, and in our city beats the heart of a Trojan. UALR, we are Little Rock's team.